barn finders. Is it worth a buy? Let's read the words, the words. Of the developer. Search for valuable items stashed in abandoned barns. Take part in storage auctions. Bid high and buy yourself a chance to find exclusive items hidden in the past. Remember Storage Wars, guys? That uh, show with the fake people? I used to love watching that. That was great. Well, this game is a bit like that. Uh, you have bins where you can bid on bins. You look in the bin. I don't mean a bin where you put your rubbish. I'm talking about these storage bins where you would look to see what's in there have to work out how much value you think's in there, work out a, a bit of a bid that you're going to go to, and then you bid against other competitors trying to get the same bin. I mean, awesome. You also bid on huge estates, barns and shit like that, or bid for the right to actually go there and look for anything that you can find, and anything you find, you can take home and sell it. And you're looking for these valuable items. Sometimes you might even find a, a, a car hidden in a barn that's been there years. Huge profit, guys. When you get back to your barn, you've got little units where you can wash stuff, wash items, you can repair items, you can even find bits of items and assemble them over time with the other bits that you find on different barns. And then you've got a little redneck shop where you can sell everything to, to customers who teleport in. It all sounds awesome, finding loot. Who doesn't like finding loot, guys? Finding loot is awesome. So it's like the ultimate game of finding loot, repairing loot, and selling loot with auctioneering and, and all of that stuff. Plus a quite quirky little story about aliens wanting moonshine. So why do I think the game's a pile of shit then? Guys, this game, right, is so freaking frustrating because it should have been way better than this. It could have been way better than this, but... For some insane reason, the developers of this game have completely missed the point, in my opinion anyway. You see, every morning you'll wake up guys and you check your emails and you will be sent to a location. It could be an old film studio, it could be a barn, it could be a, just a, a, a swamp area, it could be anything. It'll be a building or a numerous amount of buildings and in them buildings are hidden tons of loot. You might have to bid to get the right to go in there, but you'll win that bid. Don't worry about that. You go in, you then search for things. You might have to dig holes. You buy a shovel, you dig holes in areas where you can clearly see an outline that needs to be dug out. You'll have an axe that you can smash all the worthless junk up and the little bits that you use to repair items with. But sooner or later, you'll start and see things with a yellow outline. You simply press the T key and that teleports that item into the back of your pickup. That's a valuable item. Other items may have a little jigsaw piece on them, uh, which means they're part of a, a bigger item, so you have to assemble them in your assembler. Some might have a little symbol on that means they're dirty. They're the ones you have to hose down in your cleaning bay. And you go around these zones easily finding everything. I mean, ridiculously easy. Sometimes you have to find a key to a locked door, but the key's behind an item that you pick up anyway or smash up. Sometimes you might be... Uh, confronted with a lockpick situation, oh my, a lockpick situation that you can never lose because to, to lockpick a door you simply move the slider till a green light comes on. That begins the sequence. You then have to move it to another place where there's a green light. Now because you can only move one place left or right, you can't fail to find the other green light and each lockpick, no matter how many lights you have to find, will take a maximum of like 20 seconds. It's crazy. There's also scary areas. There's this old, um, this film set and Adolf Hitler jumps out from behind certain, <laughs> certain, certain gravestones and zombies, just cardboard cutouts that were obviously film props for when they filmed the movie there. And there's about 15 of the cheapest jump scares and they got me every f***ing time. But at the end of the day, guys, wherever you go, and whatever you find, you come back to your little redneck shack. You hose down all the dirty items, repair all the broken items, simply click on your shelves and that fills them all with the stuff you've got. You can expand to build a few more shelves in your, in your shop. Then you just stand there waiting for customers to teleport in. The same customers that you bid with in the bidding wars. And they will want to buy your items. Now apparently some of these people have specialised kind of tastes and you have to match up the right customer with the right item, but you don't really. I just sold to whoever it was that came in the f 
fucking shop and I didn't give a toss. And you know what? I didn't even bother haggling with anything under $100-ish, kind of. Because you don't need to, you get that much money. The haggling system is hilarious. A little bar going across the bottom of the screen. If it stops on the left, then they'll walk away or not give you any more money for it or might even want a reduction. If it stops all the way over to the right into the green, they'll give you more money than you're asking for it. And you might get two or three haggles per customer and you simply just tap the keyboard when you want the little line to stop. Basically, 99% of the time you will stop it in the green on the right. Aside from this mundane gameplay, you then have three big bidding competitions. It's like the, the Olympic Games of bidders. The Barn Finder Olympics. Um, you go to this place where this is where it becomes like storage wars. Different bins that you can bid on. You can't see what's in the bins. It's, it's a bit blurred out. You're kind of having a peep trying to work out how much profit's in there. So you know how much to bid on to kind of work it out. You know, you don't want to make a loss. Oh dear. This is the thing, guys. This is the flaw in this this whole aspect of the game. This should have been the best part of the game, but it's actually the worst. See, all you have to do here, guys, is win the bins and then the game will tot up how much value is in each bin and at the end of the five there's usually four or five bins at the end of them it will see which competitor has earned the most money out of the bins and whoever earns the most money gets the star prize which is usually quite an expensive vehicle so what do you do well you just buy every fucking bin everyone it doesn't matter whether you make a profit or a loss in the bin you just buy every bin by ninja bidding at the last second. Yeah, I'll take that. You just come in and just ninja every bin. You don't care what's in it because you know you're going to make a lot of money on it anyway. And once you've won enough bins to take the star prize, that will compensate you for any bins that might have given you a little bit of a loss. And you always, I always came out and I finished the game with huge profits. Utterly, utterly pointless. And, I, and then I thought, maybe this game's just aimed at children then. Maybe it's just a kid's game. It crossed my mind until I realised I was hosing down the mouthpiece of a blow-up doll to get all the stains out. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a kid's game, guys. So it's got a woeful story. It's got pointless auctions. It's got easy loot to find. What's the point of the game? That's the problem. What is the freaking point of this game? There is no point to it other than just finishing the game. It's just a clicker. You just click things. For, for no reason, really, because there is, it, there's no competition, there's nothing at all. It should have been so much better. I mean, all the developers had to do here was have all the AI competitors own a shop and have their shop competing against your shop, like you've seen in many tycoon type of games. You can see their profit, you can see your profit. You can maybe buy their shop out if you get enough profit. That would give way more meaning to go into these auctions and looking at trying to work out what's in there knowing how much you're going to bid have them a bit more aggressively bid as well they're just so passive with their bids you can easily 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 beat them in the bids but there's none of that there's no competition there's no need to earn loads of profit it's pointless and so the game for me is just a pointless clicker and it's such a shame because it could have been great. I would have loved a storage type game competing against even other players, but certainly against AI players to try and outdo them, to get more money than them. That would have been great, but nothing to see here, guys. A pointless, pointless game.